we are back with Dr. Alicia Beal, family medicine provider at Novant Health Salem Family Medicine in Winston-Salem, talking about all kinds of sleeping habits, daylight saving time. By the way, if you didn't remember, daylight saving time is this weekend. You're going to be falling back an hour Saturday night. All right, so many people use all kinds of different remedies to help them sleep. Let's first tackle melatonin. Yes. Melatonin can be helpful for falling asleep. It's not a great product for staying asleep. Most people don't use it correctly. You really should be taking it about three to five hours before your anticipated time of sleep. If you're trying to shift your sleep, you probably want to take it about a couple of hours before what you're wanting to shift to. Um, your natural melatonin rises throughout the, the evening. Uh, and so you want to take it a little early and let it to rise up and make you sleepy. If you take it right before bedtime, it's going to be rising about the time you need to wake up and you're going to feel sluggish in the morning. Ah, good point on that one. Okay, gotcha. Um, and is it something that you have to take it like all the time to make it build up or can you just take it those few hours ahead of time and then it works? It's, it's just for that evening. I will say the pills are a little more product, predictable on how they excrete their melatonin. Uh, gummies are a little more unpredictable. So if you're using a gummy and you find that you're feeling really tired in the morning, you probably want to switch to a pill. It may be releasing later into the night than you uh, at a level that you want. You just don't want to have that. Okay. Then we have kind of like the old, you know, homeschool uh, kind of like remedies. So that's the warm milk or the chamomile tea. Do those work? Uh, chamomile has been traditionally used for anxiety, but the studies are kind of conflicting. Uh, so I can't really recommend chamomile. I can't recommend for it or against it since it's conflicting in terms of evidence. Uh, it, there is a little caveat with chamomile that if you're on a blood thinners, it can actually accentuate blood thinning. So if you're on a blood thinner, you probably don't want to use chamomile. Uh, warm milk, I, I don't think there's any evidence that it's sedating necessarily. Um, it's probably a part of a nice bedtime routine, which is always advisable for helping you to go to sleep. There was a little animal study that showed that there was melatonin in cows at a significant level that were milked at night. But I think it's really difficult for us in today's day and age to know whether or not your milk was came from a cow at nighttime. <laughs> right, for sure. Sleepy cows giving us good milk. Okay, um, a couple of the questions that we have here. This person says, since going through menopause, I'm having trouble going to sleep. Any suggestions? Yes, that can be very difficult. And some people turn to hormone replacement therapy if they're having a lot of hot flashes. But if you're not having as many hot flashes, Having a whole food plant-based diet has actually been shown to be very helpful for decreasing the amount of hot flashes that a person has. Um, additional thing, I'll tell people to keep a little cool pack, like an ice pack near them near the bed that's, that stays cool for a while. And if you wake up with a hot flash, pull it to your chest to help cool your core down uh, and help you to go back to sleep. That can be helpful as well. All right, what happens like when you do wake up? So there was a period of time where I would be waking up at like one or two in the morning and I felt like I was up for like two or three hours. What should we do when we wake up in the middle of the night? Do we get out of bed? Do we toss and turn? What do we do? Okay, so first thing, do not pull up your phone, your TV, your tablet, because those are all emitting blue light. And as we already talked about, that suppresses melatonin and it will keep you up longer. Uh, lay there for about 15 minutes and try to clear your mind. If you're familiar with, or you can look up about progressive relaxation and soft belly breathing, like three seconds in, six seconds out, focus on your breathing while you do progressive relaxation. That can be extremely helpful. If you've been laying there for about 15 minutes, don't stress out, get up, go to another room, sit with dim lighting, read a boring book a little bit. And when you start to feel sleepy, go back and get in bed and try again. Okay, gotcha. Um, this person says, occasionally I switch schedules at work. Is there a way to help prepare my body for switching those schedules? That's a difficult question just because I don't know how big a leap or switch that, that it's going to be happening there. So if you're gonna have a larger shift, you may start you know a week before trying to shift your bedtime and your get up time something that can be helpful is that you really can't it's hard to control what time you go to sleep but you can control what time you wake up so start shifting your wake up time set your breakfast about 45 minutes after the time that you want to get up so that your body will start anticipating that carb heavy meal releasing releasing cortisol in anticipation of that and waking you up and so if you control the time that you are getting up you'll eventually build enough sleep deficit or sleep debt Mm -hmm. to make it easier for you to go to sleep. Sometimes you can start um, backing off by 15 minute increments 
from the time you were going to sleep, like every day, just keep backing up that right. time gradually. Okay. All right. We're going to continue to take your questions. We're going to talk about daylight saving time a little bit more. Right now, we're going to get a check on the forecast.